Right, back on again. Lots of little ones that I'm doing. I do that as a precaution in case the camera turns itself off, by the way, as well. So, right, we're leaving that little stream. We're entering Salworthy Woods. Look out for the pink arrow. Because I'm probably doing everything in reverse. Now, rather than just branch off, so see that if you go just down there, Look, there's a sign there. It says Berry Castle. We might have to go back down to that in a minute. Or we come up here. And there's another sign. Which also says Berry Castle. Selworthy Green. Yes, yeah, so like I said, all these ramparts here would be castle. Yeah, going right round either way, really, I think. There we go. Honeycock Coombe. Selworthy Coombe. Berry Castle. So that's where we're going, folks. We are going people going up where I was a minute ago, up there, and we're going up, climbing up to the castle ruins, and I said this hillside would be the base of a hill fort, so isn't it gorgeous everybody, so peaceful, lush, Toadstool and mushroom time, although I think they're fading already. I think a week, two weeks ago they might have been. But there will be others that come out. Now another theory of mine is that this path joins up with another one that I nearly followed last week on another diversion I did. But like I said, last week I was more weary and I'd already done a lot. So I'm going up. I might turn off in a minute, everyone. Take some pictures while I'm hiking upwards. Just to show you a bit. So I've got to go all the way up there. Look. Over and out a minute. Right then, I'm zigzagging again. There's a quick big hill over there as well. There's so much to explore. You'd need to live in a place, wouldn't you, for at least six months to get a good grasp of it all. Right, we're still carrying up. We're climbing up the... This is all part of the castle, up, up there and everything. All down there, this huge hill fort. With paths carved out of it. ahead. Even though I've had um, nearly a, not, not a week, uh, five or six days break, although I, even then I, I did a three hour walk um, two days ago. But my legs are still, haven't really had time to recover. But the thing is, if you leave your muscles too long, they will start to, in, uh, the older you are, waste, not waste away, but they will. You've got to keep them moving, see? <sighs> 
you know, when I gave up running, swimming and hockey, I went into like a type of period of physical decline in a way. Although I was working, um, I wasn't doing a lot of walking, I wasn't doing anything. I had a spell of quite a few years where work took over and I didn't do anything and I was I picked up some bad habits like smoking for a few for a number of years <sighs> sitting in a pub looking out a pub window on a sunny day I don't mind admitting that that happened at one point <sighs> but in my younger life up to my 40s I was very fit, very active throughout the whole of my 30s. I didn't smoke or anything. Um, all my children were involved in, in doing things. Running, swimming, judo, all that usual stuff that kids get into. And uh, when I changed careers and became a nurse, it was so knackering, there was hardly any time to keep fit, really. Um, the shift work, night shifts, very, very hectic profession um, I, I, I've had to fight to get back um, since retiring I've had to fight to get my physical health um, tuned in a bit you know hence all the walking now which I'm in I'm not doing I'm forced to do it I love it wish I'd done it when I was looking out of a pub window you now uh, like I said I'd always been an active person um, but I did have a, a, a decade of decline, I call it, and then I was saved in the, getting saved in the 60s. Now, in the, this is just part of my reflections, which I often do on walks, by the way. It's a visual diary, a reflective journal. And when I'm breathing in the be beautiful atmosphere, the pure air... Surrounded by beauty, it reminds me of keeping healthy, keeping in tune with it all, to be quite honest. Um, anyway, this track here, coming from that way, I think I know where that comes from. It's further up the coombe, and I nearly followed that the other week, but once again, I didn't, because um, time. So anyway, it's telling me now... You don't need to go to Selworthy Coombe. You've just left Selworthy Coombe and you came down it. Let's get to the castle. And yeah, I think it's important to put a few reflections on. No one's life is perfect. And those people who think they are perfect, well, they aren't because they think like that. Sometimes you, these blips in your life are learning events. Not always a sort you want to use to learn, but um, if, if nothing ever happens, that is not good in a way. Sometimes it's, I know you don't have to kill people to know what it's like to murder. I don't, it's not that sort of thing, but <sighs> but I do know a lot of really great, nice people that never had a Everything's relative to the person mind. So what might seem not relevant to me could be extremely relevant to them. Um, because we are, our life events shape us in many ways. So, like I said, some people do seem to have had an unhindered life. I'm glad for them. Um, But it's all relative to the individual. People suffer. Well, like I said, what's not good for one person is for another. They just take it in a stride. So it's all... No, we can't judge. We can't really judge exactly. We can't say, well, you never had that happen to you. You, um, you know, It's no point doing that. All I know is I... I like coming out here doing this. We don't seem to be going up at the moment, are we? We don't seem to be going up. 
I'm just literally following this route. It's a great big hill, boys, with the feel of it. Right, over and out again for a minute. It's a beautiful day. <laughs>